Good morning and good afternoon to everybody joining us today. Thank you for attending today's webcast, where we're going to be giving a technical overview of ArtServe UDP, that's Unified Data Protection, for those of you that don't know. And uh, the best part was the is that it includes a live demo. So my name is Mary Owen. I'm gonna be helping out our host today. He is the one and only Stacy Budd. So Stacy is our SpiceWorks Bing guy and he's a sales engineer here at ArcServe. He's gonna be going through everything with you guys. So as he's doing the presentation, we'd love to see your questions. So send those to us using the question section of your interface and we'll get to as many of those as we can at the end of the event. Um, today's session is also being recorded, so you can keep an eye out for an email that will be going to the email address you registered with, um, you know, probably in a day or two. So keep an eye out for that. So with that out of the way, take it away, Stacy. All right, fantastic. Thank you, Mary, and welcome to everybody. We do appreciate the, you know, take you taking your time out of your day to come and listen to me babble on about about ArcServe and backup strategies and disaster recovery and what we can offer, you know, in that um, field for you. When we take a look at, you know, if you're not familiar with ArcServe, we're a worldwide company. Um, we have a presence, you know, across the globe. Um, many you know industry recognitions we offer software options we have to offer appliance options and some exciting news on the appliance options um, and then we have cloud options as well right when, when it comes to yeah to that too so we'll, we're going to focus on on the udp side of things and the 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 arcserve cloud direct side of things you know but we do off, also have um, archiving you know, if we have time, maybe we'll take a look at that too. Uh, kind of hard to fit th three subjects, and me and Mary were talking, speaking to that earlier. But if we do have some time, we'll, we'll speak a little bit to our archiving solution too. If you're not familiar with ArcServe UDP, it is our image-based backup solution supporting um, physical servers, virtual servers, um, performing agentless backups, in the case of VMware and Hyper-V, supports applications, supports Windows, supports Linux. You know, it's really, it's really targeted, you know, to give you a simplified experience whether you're backing up any of those environments, whether you're performing disaster recovery or, or, um, or restores, you know, we want the, that experience to be as straightforward, um, same console, same interface, same experience uh, when you perform these type of, of restores and backups and, and different things like that as well. UDP does scale very well. Um, I've got customers that, you know, r really honestly, they don't even, you know, utilize all the features of UDP. They just go down and take a look at it from an agent-based perspective and back up a single machine or workstations or something like that. But where you really start to get to some of the advantages is as you scale out. Right, so we we do take advantage of, of features like global deduplication. We do take advantage of features like replication to replicate the data. All features that we're going to talk about um, as we go on. So if you have remote sites, one site, you know, multiple sites want to go off to the cloud, this is really going to be a solution that kind of works for you as far as that goes. I did speak a little bit about you know bringing everything into one interface, keeping it straightforward and easy for you. Our unified man Management console gives you the ability to manage everything right from not only one console, but primarily from one screen within the console. So you, you do not need to learn, you know, additional areas of the console in order to do I perform either a restore or something like that. Right. So, you, it, again, keeping it simple. We have a plan based data protection. You'll generally start with a backup plan. You know whether that's an agent-based plan or an agent list plan, then you're going to add on tasks to that. Do you want to replicate the data to another location? Is that location going to be another location that you have? Is that location going to be, you know, um, for instance, it could be a cloud location, right, or something like that as well. You know, so giving the ability to replicate that data to another location, um, copy that data. 
to another type of media, either disc or tape media. You know, some people still want to have that manual piece where where they do that. We we can support that as well. Um, DR capabilities, disaster recovery capabilities, where we can take and you know spin up your backups as virtual machines, so that in case of of some type of catastrophic failure or something like that, you can still keep everything up and running, either on site or off site. You know, and they did mention, you know, being able to, um, you know, support going up to cloud, things like that. We not only can we send the backups, but we could take out of those backups individual files, you know, or folders and send those off to, to cloud, public cloud like Amazon or Azure as far as that goes as well and be able to do that for you. We have a centralized backup server. This is a recovery point server, whether we're talking about appliances or software deployments. This would be the centralized backup server that's going to take most of, of the load and perform and offload most of that uh, performance hit that you would have on your clients. Right. Um, we do have WAN optimization built into the product. We do have the ability to, to seed the data to this recovery point server. We call it Jumpstart. Right, so we have have that. In fact, I was just working with a customer recently where they had two locations, and instead of replicating between the two locations, they wanted to start out with with jump starting the data. So we walked them through how to do that as well. Um, when we take a look at you know backup approach, this is an interesting thing because infinite incrementals have been around for a while. Okay, but I still run into people sometimes that aren't comfortable with the technology. Um, way that we handle it is what we do is we take and we we're looking at the middle column here we're taking it we're doing a full backup to begin with so anytime we back up a machine for the very first time we're going to take and recognize that it's the first time that that machine was backed up and then we're going to take and run a full backup so even if you scheduled an incremental we would still um, run a full because that machine's never been backed up then we're going to take advantage of change block tracking drivers and we're going to do your incremental backups after that you're going to set a retention policy once you max out on that retention policy whether it's daily weekly monthly backups throughout the day whatever it might be we're going to finish the next incremental and then we're going to take and merge our full into the oldest incremental this occurs on the recovery point server right so you don't see any type of impact on your client server as long as you have that recovery point server in place right so um, it, what this means is now you can hit aggressive backup schedules because your backups are going to be much quicker number one you're doing image-based backups right um, and the second side of that is you know we're we're, on, we're taking advantage of those change block tracking drivers so we already know what's changed so it, it can be very much more aggressive when it comes to that you can schedule full backups you know I've had discussions with customers where they still want to schedule fulls you know but um, typically what we recommend is you go with an infinite incremental um, if you go into one of these like if I went into infinite incremental number four we present that out as what we call recovery point so what you see is a rehydrated view of that incremental and everything below it it looks just like it's a full backup okay and we'll show you that you know when I when I show you the interface so there's from a restore perspective there's no telling that that was an incremental backup but from a backup time perspective that's where you're going to benefit from if I were to trigger a full backup right what we would do is we scan each block on the disk determine what's changed and that's the data that we're going to write to the disk right so it takes longer because we're looking at every block of data on the disk however the end result what gets written to the disk is going to be the same okay now we do talk about free space here you know when you add in deduplication and those kind of things truly to be honest with you i think the true benefit is speed you know being able to, to um, narrow in your backups instead of daily to every um 12 hours, six hours, three hours, 30 minutes, you know, in some cases, 15 minutes, right? Depending on your data change and those kind of things. So being able to really narrow in and have a better level of protection, a better recovery point objective, right? When we look at that. We do take advantage of global deduplication. This is an inline process, meaning it all 
is performed in memory before it ever um, lands on disk. So at the client server, we're going to take a look and what is the unique data on that particular client server that's being backed up. Then we're going to send the hash file from that deduplication process to the recovery point server, to the backup server, if you will. And then it's going to compare to to what's sitting on disk. So that's other servers, that's um, retention, you know, all of that. And then we're going to go back to the client server and we're going to request from that client server the truly unique data. Okay, this is going to give you um, much less um, bandwidth requirements, network bandwidth requirements, WAN bandwidth net, um, requirements. And when we replicate from a recovery point server to another recovery point server, that same deduplication process is going to take place. Right, so um, definitely it's also scalable. We, we start at 4K data um, block size, so it's very, very granular. Um, we do offer 8, 16, and 32 options in there as well that you can change it to. In Europe, I see a lot of people do 16K deduplication. In the US, they tend to build out the box to do 4K. It means you need more, a little bit more memory, right? Uh, but you less storage requirements. Okay. We can also offload that process to an SSD so to bring down your memory requirements as well. In fact, that's what we do on our appliances. For our VMware and Hyper-V, we do offer agentless backup. Okay, so uh, we're going to take advantage of their storage APIs to present us a backup. They present it to a proxy on Hyper-V. It'd be the hypervisor itself. On VMware, it could either and it, it could be the, the backup server, it could be any server with a UDP agent on it. Uh, just depends on how you want that data to go over the network, right, as far as that goes. Um, and then we, we can still offer a granular restore, right, of files and folders. Um, we can still do consistent, you know, application consistent backups for SQL and Exchange, uh, granular restore for Exchange, um, obviously there as well. Um, so all of that is still going to be available for the, um, for the agentless backup. Uh, local and remote virtual standby. This is that disaster recovery capability where we'll take the backup and we're going to convert it into a virtual machine ready to turn on, ready to start. It'll monitor the source machine and it can do automatic failover as well. Now you, you are creating a machine, so it's a third copy of your data. You have your source data, you have your, your backup data, and now you have your disaster recovery or standby machine. Um, so we do have another offering where you wouldn't have that, right? We'll talk about and speak to that as well. But virtual standby, you know, you, you get your expected performance because, you know, you, you have, you know, already set up, tested, you know what you're going to do. There's no emulation. The machine's actually created. So you know what level of performance you're going to get from there. And you're going to choose how many snapshots you want to keep, right, as standby machines. So when you perform a virtual standby, you're going to get a list of the snapshots that you want to fall back to as well. Now, Instant VM is that other process where we emulate the, the backups of virtual machines. So, you know, if I don't have the additional storage, right, um, it, or maybe I need to fall back to a previous backup, right, then my virtual standby, I can leverage Instant VM. Okay, Instant VM gives you that flexibility. It's a four-step process. It's very, very simple, straightforward. You go through and define the system and all of that as well. You define how much memory you want to give it. Um, we're going to show you this. I'm going to show you this as part of the recovery um, that we do when I when I demo the product there as well. Um, very straightforward, uh, a quick. I could probably get a machine up in four or five minutes using this. Okay. Virtual standby is going to be the boot time of that system, right? There's no configuration because it's already done, right? So this, with the configuration, in most cases, four or five minutes, takes me about maybe one or two minutes to do the configuration, right? I, I could probably do it quicker, but I work with the product all the time. Um, let me go back real quick. The instant BMR recovery, this is another very, very cool um, option. This is on the Linux side. Now, usually everything that we do on one Windows or, you know, we do on Linux and, and vice versa, instant BMR is the ability to take and remotely, 
right? Uh, do a bare metal restore on Linux system, leveraging live CD, right? So we're going to take a, and um, boot up a system with live CD. The backup server is waiting for either that IP or MAC address to come online, and then we'll start streaming the restore to re the re-imaging that box. Uh, so very, very nice feature there. You don't need to be, you know, at the machine in order to, to perform the restore. And users can start using the machine before it's uh, completely re-imaged. As they go to fetch data, we'll fetch it and um, restore it to the box for them. Right, so um, it's a faster level of recovery. You don't need to be on site in order to do it. Um, so you can stream, stream it over to them. It's very nice. Now we do also offer not only backup, but we also offer continuous protection of systems too. Right, so if you had a system that you wanted to, that it was just critical. Right. And maybe, you know, there's too much change rate to back it up every 15 minutes or maybe even 15 minutes isn't, you know, going to hit the mark for you. You can always leverage full system high availability where we're going to continuously replicate over block level system changes, machine level changes that are happening to a down VM ready to come up online in place of that other machine, you know, in the case of a failover. Right. And we do offer, you know, fell over and fell back with this. Right. We would be able to to to, to re-image that system, the, the source image um, and get you back up and running, too, as far as that goes. And you could do this going to, you know, a, a virtual environment that you have. You could go up to Amazon, for instance, as another location. You know, so you do have a couple options as where you'd want that standby system to be, you know, within UDP. But we have a feature within UDP called Assured Recovery, and Assured Recovery gives you the ability to do automated DR testing. This is within the high availability solution. This is also within the UDP solution, where we can take and um, bring up those systems, right, um, on another network or not on a network at all, make sure they, they boot up, um, allow you to run custom scripts against those, and make sure that everything works, and then we bring it back down. Right. So in the case of 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 instant virtual machine and UDP, we're going to discard the mount point. We still keep the backup in the case of high availability. Now we're actually bringing up that that system, right, that, that we're doing continuous replication over to and we're spooling up the changes. Um, I mean, it's the actual system. We're not mounting it or anything like that. We bring it up online um, and we test it and we bring it back down and we apply those changes because we're doing continuous replication, right? So we have a sure recovery for both features. Um, and when we look at reporting, reporting is always important for, you know, um, a lot of people out there. Um, it's good to understand what's going on, you know, um, how much capacity are you are you backing up? Um, what's your deduplication compression ratios? You know um, how is your data growing? You know your uh, when you look at backup size trending reports, those are always very important to kind of understand from a growth perspective. You know, do you have enough storage? Are you going to have enough storage a year from now? And those kind of things, and be able to to plan everything out out as well. And there's plenty of other reports here. Those are are some of the most common ones that that I just went through. Obviously backup status reports and those kind of things as well. Now we do offer four levels of appliances um, and within those appliances we offer different tiers, right? Different sizes for those appliances. So for instance the 8100 is either a four um, terabyte box or a six terabyte box. Right, um, and then when we go all the way down to the end, the 8400 ranges from 32 terabytes up to 80 terabytes. Right, so and within that, we have different sizes. I think they come in um, four terabytes on an eight terabyte upgrade, so it goes from 32 to 40 to 48 and so forth. Right, where it builds up that way. We also have, and I don't think I put the slide in here, I apologize. We also have filled expansion. Um, to these as well, where you can add like eight terabytes additional storage um, to these. Now, not it's going to be you know it's going to be a um, 
it's going to be another box that goes in that gives you that additional storage. And there's not just eight terabytes. There's additional sizes we can give you. If you're interested in, in further information on that, just let us know, and we can definitely provide a little bit more information on that. Um, so generally, you're going to purchase it from our from us in the size that you want. It, you know, either if we, we focus on the 8100, either a four or a six terabyte. Down the road, if you outgrow that, you have the ability to to add on right one of those field expansion units to it. You know, the 8100. You know, you're going to pretty much double the box, right? If you, if you add that eight terabyte on there. Um, but definitely what's really exciting when it comes to the appliances right now, we have some fantastic deals out there. Now, I didn't build a slide to talk about the deals. You know, that's really not what we're here for, but we're here more on the technical side. But it's very more important to also focus, you know, we have some buy one, get one offers on the appliances where, you know, you're going to get additional appliances. We have another one that's double the storage. So, you know, um, you know, we'll give you additional storage in, in the appliances as well so that, you know, uh, you can, you know, really get the best bang for your buck. And even on, on some of them, you're getting cloud options, right? Where we're going to give you a year subscription of cloud as well, right? So uh, definitely, you know, I would recommend that you reach out to your partners and get some information on those. If you're interested in an appliance, you don't want to have to worry about building out a server or something like that. We do have a nice tool that, that goes out and um, it's a resource estimator where we look at the amount of machines you have, amount of data that you have, what's your expected growth and some other information like that. We would work with you or it's available off our website. If you just want to look at that yourself, you can go to our support site and pull it up there to, as well. It's called the resource estimator. Um, that will tell you how to build your own server. It'll also size you into a um, UDP appliance, right? On one of our 8,000 series appliances. So we could tell you what size, you know, appliance you'd fit into. Now, um, what it doesn't take into account is things like virtual standby, right? If I was going to do on appliance virtual standby, you know, we might need more storage, we might need more memory. That would be um, uh, predicated by, you know, the number of machines, how big were those machines, how much memory, and all of that as well. Right, so you just kind of add that onto the boxes there too. So let me advance my slide there. When we look at you know some of the things that we can do, you know, within UDP, some of our marquee features of, if you will, Office 365 protection. We have we say Exchange Online on here, um, also SharePoint Online as well. Right, being able to support that too. Um, agentless backup for VMware and Hyper-V. Um, we do support NetApp, Nimble, and HPE 3PAR. We do backup, you know, SIF shares and UNC paths. Um, we can backup data to and from the cloud. We can have automated DR testing within the product, and we can have SLA reporting to detailed SLA reporting. Um, you can set these SLA reports. So you say anytime I perform on these key systems, you can have different SLA reports for different tiers of systems if you want. And say, you know, if I restore a file, it should only take this amount of time. If I restore the entire system or I perform virtual standby, it should only take this amount of time and we'll report back on whether or not you're hitting those SLAs. All right. For the Exchange Online protection, um, we're going to give you the ability to protect, you know, your mailboxes. Um, it's interesting because sometimes it's about 50-50. Maybe when I talk to customers and they have Office 365, you know, some of them say, well, I don't need to back up my Office 365. Microsoft's doing that, um, which is, you know, they give you a, I think it's a 30-day, and then after that's best effort, okay? So some companies, that's fine. Right, other companies require to retain their data for a long period of time. So in those cases, you know, definitely being able to back that up is going to be a plus for you there too. Um, we do give you the ability to, you know, perform that granular restore of your calendars, contacts, um, individual emails, whatever you need to do out of there. Um, we're not backing up their their Exchange server, right? We're backing up the mailboxes and giving the ability to to browse those mailboxes and be able to do that as well. Um, 
this bottom note here, which I just noticed that's on there, I, I'll, I'll edit this um, power, PowerPoint when we get done here. Um, we can dedupe directly, right? So there's no reason to back up to a non-deduplicated data store, right? So you can d uh, back up that data directly to your deduplicated data store. So that is incorrect there for both Exchange and SharePoint. Same thing for for UNC passes. We don't need to back up to a non-deduplicated data store. We can back up to a deduplicated data store, right? So we're going to back up your shared folders, you know, um, through the SMB protocol, right? So if you have just data sitting out there that you need to back up, you're not worried about the systems, you know, it's sitting on an AS or something like that, and you want to back it up, we can do that as well, right? And be able to do that. Okay, so to be able to, do, to form that. We can also protect um, newly added VMs, so we do take advantage of this, you know, um, on both VMware and the Hyper-V side of things. We can um, um, take advantage of that capability, too. We're going to kind of end it here on the Assured Recovery, and then I'm going to go into the... Um, interface we're going to take a look at, at the demo side of things but when we speak to the the assured recovery test right this is just that automated dr test you know so we're going to take the backup of your systems or we could do um, assured recovery test on your data as well and mount it as a virtual disk um, run scripts against it you know make sure it comes online in case of a system run scripts against it make sure things like sql starts exchange starts things like that so that you know that everything's going to work if you need to fail over you know for for that latest one you could say i want to test my daily backups my weeklies my monthlies right or you could say you know let's run this on a schedule and just test whatever my latest backup happens to be Okay, to give you some flexibility. It doesn't you know, mean that you shouldn't do your own level of testing, right? But this does give you that automated test where then you can go in, you know, and, and do some further testing on your own, you know, leisure as far as that goes. Because one thing about uh, uh, recovery testing, unfortunately, a lot of times it gets put off and delayed because there's other emergencies that happen, phone systems go down, networks go down, you know, people lose data or, you know, the CEO drops his laptop or something like that. All those are going to be key things that, you know, are going to take up your time. This gives you the ability to have some automated testing in there that you can always, you know, know that, you know, uh, you know as of that time, everything was, was good. There was no problems from a restore perspective. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm going to drag over to my screen our interface here. So when we take a look at UDP, I've already logged in. I saved us some time there as far as that goes to make sure that we, you know, um, best utilize our time here. And I've gone ahead and gone into our resource tab, which this is where you're going to um, add the machines that you want to protect. This is where you're going to um, perform your backups, your restores, your disaster recovery, everything right from this resource tab. Um, we do have our reports, our job tabs, our log tabs, and those ty type of things where you can go in, you know, and get some additional information. But even in some of those cases, like for instance, on this system right here, I could directly go into the logs here by selecting view logs, and it would take me in directly into the logs for that system. So even make it a little bit more efficient, where if I went to the log tab, I would choose my system. I would choose the type of logs that I want to see. All I want to see all logs, all alerts, all notifications, or do I want to see the ones that just pertain to backups and things like that. So this gives you a kind of a expedited experience, if you will, because it just takes you directly into that system. And then you can drill down further from there. Uh, so right here, we're going to go in, add nodes, we're going to bring them in, qualified domain name, IP address, bring them in through vCenter or Hyper-V, bring them in through Active Directory. Um, all you really do is you create a list, okay? Once you have that list created, then you're going to go into plans and you're going to create your backup plans. Um, and if, if we take a look and we create a new backup plan here real quick, I'm not going to go all the way through this, but... When we say, you know, backing up physical and virtual, it's going to be pretty much the same experience for you. If I go into an agent-based backup plan, 
I would define my source. So I would add the system I want to protect and I can define, define the volume because I have an agent on the machine so I can back up specific volumes. Right? We tell you to back up your OS volume because that gives you disaster recovery. You know, um, a lot of times I see that's the volume people want to skip. With data deduplication, you're not going to be writing a lot of that data, right? So definitely recommend that you back that up. And then your destination schedule and in an advanced tab we'll take a look at here in a moment. If this was a, a VM or a Hyper-V system, I could just do an agentless backup. And when we go in, we're going to define a proxy. Okay, which can be the backup server, and then we're going to define some rules about how that data is going to be quiesced, right? So that's really the only difference. Everything else, destination, schedule, advanced, all of that's going to be the same. Okay, so uh, from a learning perspective, you know, there's a, not a lot of difference to kind of um, uh, muddle the waters, if you will. You don't have to learn a different interface. Uh, you're just going to define a proxy and then how you want the data to be quiesced. That's really going to be the difference. And you'll notice there was no um, there was no select volumes because when we get the snapshot from the hypervisor, it's the entire machine. Uh, if you wanted to exclude volumes, right, you could put an agent on that machine and back it up that way do an agent-based backup. I've been getting that question a lot from, from customers. So, you know, if you do want to do that, you can do that, okay? Um, I do have a couple backups already configured since we're, you know, on a shortened kind of time frame talking about multiple products today. I thought that what we would do is we just go into some of these different backup plans that we already have. This particular one is, you know, backing up an agent-based backup, right? Is my first level of backup. I'm defining where I want to back up to, which is a data store on this particular machine. Um, a schedule, which I don't actually have one in here, so we would add a backup schedule. And we would define if we want that to be a daily, weekly, or monthly, and we could have multiple schedules, right? Or I could do a custom throughout the day. So I could go through and add a daily, you know, and maybe I want that to run, you know, every day but Friday and Saturday and Sunday right and retain seven of those and we can keep kind of adding to that maybe I want to add a weekly right my weekly I want to be on you know Fridays okay and we can retain that as an incremental because of infinite incrementals you know it's going to keep that um, level of um, quick backups right when you go to view the, the and perform the restore where you're, it's going to look just like it's a full backup you know we can continue on and build out a grandfather father son so if i added like a monthly retain 12 of those still keeping them at incrementals uh, maybe i want to back up throughout the day a custom backup right so maybe in this case let's keep it every three hours right but we could go down to every so many minutes as well 15 minutes is as granular as we'll let you schedule but really that's going to be um, predicated by your um, by your change rate now I've seen a lot of customers that their backups literally take a few minutes right and some even faster right so you know if you don't have a lot of change right no problem hitting a 15 minute backup we can do some other things to help you hit that 15 minute backup as well okay so if we change this to we will do 15 minutes if we change that to that i can say you know what let's not catalog right at um time of backup let's do it at time of restore now my daily weekly monthly so let's go ahead and catalog at time of backup because i have a little bit more time you know because it's after business hours or something like that so i'm going to turn off cataloging we're still going to catalog but it'd be at time of restore so my restores on these granular backups are going to be a little bit more um, um aggressive right as far as that goes but my um but the 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 alter, the the benefit to that is my recovery point objective, right? It is much more aggressive, so it's a give and a take. I can also say, you know what, that merge process also takes time. So let's go ahead and add a merge schedule, right? And that merge schedule, I want to perform, you know, after seven because that was an eight to six backup, you know, on those. So we'll change this to a seven to to 10 or something like that right for a merge schedule 
right? So now that's one less process. So really all I'm doing is I'm snapshotting. Now, does that mean I'm going to get over my 10 recovery points until 7 o'clock kicks off? Absolutely, right? I'm going to grow my data, and then I'm going to merge and merge it back to my retention policy. But I, it's much easier now to hit that 15-minute. Um, recovery point ejective, right, as far as that goes. Uh, there's also throttling. So if I want to do disk throttling, you know, how I'm going to affect the, 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 the I.O. on the machine, we can definitely do that there as well, okay? Um, when we go into, I skip the advanced tab, that's notifications, exchange, SQL, log truncation, those kind of things, scripting before and after, all of that as well. Replicating is another task where we can go in and define we're getting, our source is going to be our backup data, our destination is going to be another recovery point server, we're going to have a schedule tied to that. If it's blank, it's going to mean it's going to be a um, immediate after the backup job is completed or maybe I put in a schedule when I want that data to be replicated over uh, again if I'm trying to do backups throughout the day one less task to run right so maybe I don't have it um, replicate until after the day's over or something like that um, we can do a replication throttle right so if I don't want if I want to manage my bandwidth remember what's going to be replicated is the truly unique data the deduplicated data so a lot of times you know putting in a throttle you know it sounds good but you're going to find out that you're not going to be sending a lot of data across that wire anyways um, and then of course your retention there as well and then notifications email not notifications around the um, replication task and the merge task. Last part of this particular plan is a virtual standby task where we're going to um, define the ability to spin up that machine as, as another system, right? So for disaster recovery purposes. Now we've replicated that data to another location, right? So um, where do I need to perform that, um, that disaster recovery on-site or off-site. What's my virtual environment? Is it Hyper-V or is it VMware? Is it EC2? Is it Azure? Right? So all those are going to be options for you. Um, what are the resources I want to give that? How, much, how many processors? How much memory? How many snapshots do I want to keep? And it will automate it, automatically spin up those systems. What's my, what's my my ping and my timeout, you know, and all those kind of rules on top of that, right? So we, we'd have those there going on too. Um, once I have that in place, and by the way, and I probably should have stayed in that particular one, but if I wanted to add other tasks, there's an add task on the left, and then there's, it brings us into a menu and you can just choose which task you want to add, right? Um, so uh, file copy, copy to tape. Uh, tasks like that where you can add those to. From a restore perspective, right, if I go back into my nodes, I'm a fan of, you know, just right-clicking on things. We do have menus, so if I select a system, I could go up to a menu, get a list of what I could do, right, um, or I could just go to a system, like this is the one we're doing virtual standby on, right-click, I get that same menu, um, and now I can go in and, for instance, choose standby VM. And it gives me those lists of, you know, additional, th those five snapshots, which one do I want to, to bring up. Now, for instance, if this was a system I was doing 15-minute incremental backups on, right, um, and I didn't catch something like ransomware or some type of data corruption or, or something like that um, for, you know, several hours, right, all of my virtual standbys could be corrupted right it's not a good scenario you know but that's why we have instant vm so i could select that system create an instant vm and then go through a four-step process where i can say you know what go to any of my backups that are still on disk select next select the environment that i want to spin it up on either vmware or hyper-v choose my host have the backup server, the recovery point server, perform the emulation, or have another server perform that emulation, right? It just has to have UDP agent on it and the NFS server role enabled. In fact, if it doesn't have the NFS server role enabled, we'll let you know, and we'll go ahead and enable it if you want us to, okay? 
we're going to browse to a folder on that recovery server. Okay, that's where we're going to mount that machine, right? That backup. We're going to define the resources, and then once we do that, of course, type it incorrectly would help. We can go through and connect an adapter to it, give it a, a different IP address if we need to. We'd finish boot now, and it'd take about four minutes to spin up that system. Um, in the interest of time, I don't know that I'm going to actually show that because I do want to show some of our other restore capabilities. Um, but really, it would be just finish, boot now. Um, if we have time, we'll go over it. Uh, um, we'll go over to there and take a look at it. In fact, I have some other ones running right now as well. Now, your other restore options, right? So I did mention, you know, if we take a look at, you know, here's a system agentless back of a, of a system, and I go through and I perform restore, I am able to browse down. So even though this is an agentless backup, I can still go through and um, do a granular file level restore so I can browse those recovery points, right? So uh, there's nothing to tell me that this was an incremental backup, right? It looks just like a full backup to me. Uh, it's going to be a little bit slow because I'm running a couple of um, um, instant VMs there uh, on this particular one. I didn't stop the instant VM um, thing. Now, uh, on the previous one. Now, the other options that you have, too, is you can browse out to your backup destination, which on this system is just another, another um, just a location on another drive on this system. And I can do the same thing. I can switch to a recovery point view by right-clicking on it and then drill down into that system and those backups choose a backup and then just drill down into them okay and choose you know um my file of a folder copy it over wherever i need to do that right so very straightforward restore processes of course you're going to have those other capabilities of restoring you know the entire virtual machine if you wanted to do that you're going to have the, the the options to go through and restore active directory sql exchange this is what our exchange um, uh, restore looks like right it's going to be a granular restore we browse the mailbox and then we can uh, the mail store and then we can go in and choose the 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 email or the um uh, the item, right, that we want to restore, contacts, counter events, those kind of things. So a lot of granularity within UDP. Um, that recovery VM option is going to be there on virtual machines to restore that. Um, and then always you're going to have that disaster recovery capabilities there too for, for restore options. Um, all right. So... That's my UDP kind of, uh, of demo for you guys today. We're going to go over and talk a little bit about uh, Cloud Direct um, and go through some slides on that, um, and then we'll take some questions there. So please, if you do have questions you know, on UDP or on um, Cloud Direct, feel free to, to go ahead and ask those questions. Um, in summary, you know, data deduplication, replication, all those, the exchange online and, and SharePoint online capabilities, um, fast SLA, local backup first, right, with this, and then move your data off to another location. Some great um, uh, offerings right now on our appliances that even if you weren't really considering an appliance, it may be, um, you know, a good enough offer where you go ahead and look at purchasing an appliance instead of using your own hardware. So some definitely um, some things to take a look at as far as that goes. When we take a look at, you know, the Cloud Direct there are really two offerings within Cloud Direct. There is backup as a service where we're just backing up your data. And then there's disaster recovery as a service where we're going to take and um, that data is going to be not only backed up, those systems are not only backed up, but then we're also going to need the ability to spin up those systems in our, in our environment, our cloud environment, which we'll talk about in a moment too. Right, um, RTO the time to spin up those systems with disaster recoveries of services is less than five minutes. It's really the boot time, right, of that system because it's already been um, converted, and we're going to work with you and things like that as well. 
Um, when we look at you know you know the key features, it's coming directly to the ArcServe cloud. Um, we can perform a local backup if you want to do that as well. Would be you know one copy latest backup there locally too if you wanted to do that as well. I would tell you the UDP probably be a better solution for you on that side. But if you weren't looking at at, at UDP, then then uh, the um, cloud direct solution does have the capability to do that for you as well. Um, that data is going to be encrypted in motion and at rest, and we do take advantage of Google two-factor authentication. Um, as far as that goes, if, so if you want to enable that, you can do that too. Everything is web-based managed, so you can log into it from anywhere. Um, you can run your reports from there. Also, you're going to get reports sent to you um, automatically as well. Um, we're going to give you multiple ways to recover your data, files, folders, entire systems, you know, pull back down those images and be able to do that too. Um, and then of course we do support, you know, um, things like SQL and Exchange um, uh, for those as well. When we look at the uh, backup as a service kind of infrastructure, what you would have is a agent that can be installed on your server. We do have a virtual machine agent um, or an OVA file, I should say, that you can download for VMware. And on Hyper-V, you would download the, the replication agent directly on the hypervisor, right, to discover your virtual environment. Um, there's going to be, and then of course within that, we're backing up, you know, files, folders, all of that, um, images of systems, wherever you need to. Um, that data is going to be backed up directly to the ArcServe cloud infrastructure, which is, you know, managed by ArcServe. We're not partnering with anybody or anything as far as that goes. Um, we do meet, um, you know, SOC 1, Type 2, you know, requirements. We meet, you know, uh, from a um, perspective of, you know, regula regulations and things like that, HIPAA, SOX, PCI, FINRA, FERPA, you know, you name it, we, we hit, you know, most of those. So it's pretty rare that I come across one that, that we don't uh, meet as far as that goes. Um, we do have the ability to back up that data also to local media, to a SAN or a NAS or something like that. It would just be the latest backup. You're not going to keep a set of those there. Um, we do have, you know, um, we do have data centers, you know, on both coasts of the U.S., West Coast and East Coast. I don't know if we have anybody from across the pond, but we do have an England data center as well, as far as that goes. The disaster recovery as a service, right, gives you the ability to spin up those systems, right? Um, we talked about a recovery time of, you know, less than five minutes, whereas backup as a service, we're talking about, you know, backing up um, daily with the uh, disaster recovery as a service, it can be much more granular. It could be every 15 minutes, okay, that we're replicating that data over. It has automated DR testing, you know, as well within it. Um, and then we do, we do encourage you to go in and do your own DR testing as well, okay? So it's um, definitely something that you should always be doing. Um, we do support backup, fail over, fail back, you know, um, active directory integration, all those kind of things as well. One of the most important things is once you 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 purchase disaster recovery as a service, you're going to be engaged with our um, California team. They're going to work with you on your uh, kind of your connectivity side of things, the the cloud network, the VPN, the firewall. Do you need to do point to, to point kind of connectivity or point to site connectivity? What do you need to do as far as that goes? And we're going to help you. Um, any any exceptions we need to have on, our, on the firewalls and those kind of things as well. Um, when we look at the Cloud Direct um, backups as a service platform support, um, definitely support, you know, Hyper-V, Right, we support VMware, we support um, Windows systems, right, from workstations to servers, um, and then Linux and Mac in there as well. Okay, so Linux and Mac would be files and folders. If Linux is virtualized, then of course we can back it up through that method there too. We look at the disaster recovery as a service architecture, right? We layer in that additional ability to, where there's going to be a virtual environment, right, on our side where we're going to be able to spin up those systems, 
right? So well, I'm going to skip everything else, right? Because it's pretty much like um, backup as a service. But really what's going to be key here is that uh, number five is when we, you know, we're going to be able to um, – bring up those server images and, and bring them on, bring them online. And then that connectivity, right, which is number six, right, how you're going to connect into it, you know, that should have already been configured. We should have already worked with you so that we can we can deliver on, you know, I don't know if that less than five minutes is a hard number because some systems may, may take longer to boot. It's really the boot time of those systems that really you're looking at. And we don't want, you know, you to bring up your systems and then nobody be able to connect to them. So that's a big piece of that. Failback is going to be a re-image, you know, point, and then we'll be continuously, you know, we'll replicate the changes. And then, of course, that first replication will take a while. And then what we'll do is we'll replicate again and again and again until we get everything uh, back to the same and let you know. And then you can fail back over to that other system and bring it online. So it's a fairly straightforward process when it comes to that. Um, I don't think that we're going to have time to talk about UDP archiving because I do want to go through and um, speak to, you know, the questions that we have out, out there. So I apologize, but um, we'll leave that topic for another day. But we do have about 10 minutes left here to go through the questions. So um, we'll go ahead and take those. I do see um, a few out there. Um, Okay, so I, I did see a request about show high availability, instant standby, and virtual standby. So I do think I hit two of those three. High availability, I really didn't show. I apologize for that. But um, if you have any questions around, you know, that we can set up, uh, you know, a, a, um, uh, a um, demo for you on that specifically and kind of um, do that for you as well. Um, a question about, you know, does Linux include AIX. So we do support AIX on our ArcServe backup side of things. And you can get a license with UDP that does support that. So um, when we talk about ArcServe UDP and Linux, we're talking about Red Hat, CentOS, um, Debian, um, SUSE Linux, those are the main ones that we're talking about. Now, we have the ability if, you know, uh, if it's a virtual machine to back it up and still give you granular restore as long as the underlying file structure is one that we support, like for instance, ext3, right? So we, we can still give you some granular restore even on ones that, that we don't support. Um, as far as that goes, there was a question there about needing to do a catalog. OK, um, cataloging gives you that granular restore. If I was going to go off to tape, I definitely would want a catalog because if I was to do disk to disk to tape, um, if I catalog, I can perform granular restore from tape. OK, um, catalog gives you that, that granular restore. Honestly, unless it's a file server with millions of files, you're not going to see too much of a time. You know, in my environment, you might because I don't have a lot of resources. But that cataloging typically doesn't take that long. But it's something you can easily test and you can go into your plan and turn it on, you know, uh, if you see that your restore times are taking too long. I would not do cataloging on backups throughout the day right because you, you tend to want those to be faster the other advantage to doing backups throughout the day and i, I want to just focus on this for a moment is you know it's really important from you know when you look at the world that we live in today there's you know so much you know there's so much at risk right and, and a lot of times it coming from a, a, a backup that was last night you know depending on the business that might be fine Right. But, you know, if it's a medical type thing, you know, you may need but may need to be able to, you know, um, present out, you know, uh, records or something or something like that. And there's big fines associated with that. Same thing around accounting and finance stuff, too. Right. So backing up, you know, more frequently gives you the ability to definitely do that. So you want to do that in ways that it's going to impact those systems as little as possible and with imaging software. It definitely does that. Right. And then we're only grabbing the incremental changes. So there's less data changing in most cases. Right. So you're going to see less impact, you know, because you're backing up 
more frequently as well. So those are things to consider, not only the speed of the backup, the, the impact of the systems, how long those backups are taken, the granularity, the RPO, are there any kind of um, regulations that, you know, if you, if uh, I, I brought up medical, right, if, if you can't produce a record or something like that, you know, is that going to cause a problem, right, a, a fine or something like that. So keep that in mind as well. Um, and then there was just a you know a, a follow on to the cataloging and that that cataloging is not needed anymore. Um, a lot of cases you know with our product you wouldn't. We're still going to catalog. It's just that time of restore is part of that that restore process. Um, Question here about a RPS be both a primary and a secondary for two sites to cross back up to each other. Right. So this is a great question because um, really it speaks to that scalability. Right. So you could have a recovery point server in another site and that could just be a disaster recovery site. And you could just replicate your data there, have longer term retention at that other at that other site and be able to have that as a true DR, you know, possibility for you. Right. So, you know, that is one capability in order to do that, just to offsite your data. You can even have a different set of credentials. Right. So that so that, you know, no, no type of, you know, encryption or anything would pass through. Right. As far as that goes, because it has a different set of credentials. Um, all too often, you know, we're, what we're finding is customers that have other sites and, you know, those sites are 90% are of the time going to be, you know, some systems at that other site that need to be backed up as well. So absolutely, whether it's putting two appliances, one at each site and one, they, they back up their own sites and then replicate the data across to each other, you know, I, um, or whether it is a software deployment on one site and a hardware deployment on the other, like an appliance deployment on the other site, you could do that. That as well same kind of scenario where they back up themselves and cross replicate across each other or even in some cases you know supporting maybe um, at little satellite offices that don't have much data they they most of their data they're accessing through to the main data center well you know but they still have some systems there that need to be backed up things like that maybe you put a cloud direct solution on that side of things Right, which we do have, you know, WAM optimization, multi-threading, and those kind of things as well. So we don't want to just say that that cloud direct is just there for smaller kind of locations. You know, it, it can back up large environments. We have customers with, you know, many many terabytes of of data and all that coming to our, our our infrastructure. But cloud direct also does fit into like remote and satellite offices very well for that too. So keep that in mind. Um, And with that, I, I think we're right at the end of our, our time. Um, I do see some additional questions out there, but you know, I do want to be cognizant of everybody's time and everything like that as well. So, you know, um, I'm going to turn it back over to Mary to, to wrap up. But um, please keep those questions coming. And what we can do is, you know, if we didn't get to your questions, what we'll do is we'll do our best to, to um, respond back to you. All right, thank you. Thanks, Stacy. Thanks so much for that great presentation and demo. And thank you to our attendees for spending this time with us. As I mentioned earlier, we did record this session, so we'll be sending out that uh, in a day or so. If you have any additional questions, please reach out to us at arcserve.com. You can download a trial there. You can find out about the BOGO offer, chat live with one of our reps, or you can find our number to call us directly. If we didn't get to your question, we will follow up with you on that. So thanks again for spending this time with us and have a great rest of your day.